everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Mega Ruler 31 We've got the Darlington Cup race. First of all, um, please, everybody, wish your mothers, your wives, um, happy Mother's Day. Um, and hopefully, get your uh, DFS uh, lineups put in and maybe enjoy the race with her. If she's not a race fan, maybe record it and do something nice with her and then watch it later. Uh, first two races this weekend... Uh, I, picks are great until the end when there are some late crashes and kind of uh, wreck things. So let's hope that this one is a little bit um, better for us. So uh, Darlington, it's a tire wear track. Uh, this it's almost like cheese graters on the asphalt um, chipping away at these tires. So there's pretty much huge fall off. So Long run speed fall off is important. So if you're looking at the start column where you have the blue numbers, those are the top 10 in uh, practice who had um, the best long run speed. Again, it was practice. <clears throat> Take it with a grain of salt, but I think it is a decent indicator. The tire wear um, rank, as you can see, is um, what their average running position is on tire wear tracks so that's darlington that's auto club that's dover that's um what other ones were in there uh i took some if they were racing the series for a while like atlanta 20 and 21 because with the repave it's um been much better recently i thought there was another track in there that was but it's not important it's definitely you know that's what the um formula is to be able to try to help us out man what's that other track uh homestead yep homestead in miami so let's uh go through this and uh look at uh, what we got here so martin truex got the pole uh 22nd practice but he looked good in um in qualifying and he's got a good history here of uh laps led um, one of the higher percentages here of like 10% of the laps that over 10%, almost 11% of the laps he's led here or run here. He's led average finish at 12th. I don't, I know a lot of people are probably going to have him as a prime play <clears throat> and lock in just starting up here. But concerning thing was 22nd in practice. And again, like they practice in different groups. So, you know, it's things can change like cloud cover, or the amount of asphalt. So, you know, Looking at, at practice is is one thing, but then tire wear tracks, he's good. He's in good form recently, so there's a lot of good things for Truex here. So I have no objection to starting, <clears throat> you know, him in your lineup for cash if you want, like, an early dominator. Uh, but I, I can't just give him the prime label. Bubba Wallace up here also. Uh, average of tire wear tracks, not bad in practice. Uh, 22nd overall finish here, um, 22% DNF rate, hasn't led a ton of laps, so give him as a GPP. And maybe he could get out there in front of Turex and lead and dominate early, it's, it's possible, but, um, you know, not not a given. Same thing with Ricky Stenthouse here, fifth in practice, um, 23 overall, well, has one top 10 uh, average again with tire wear tracks, so I think he qualified well, but I don't know if he'll be able to stick up here or dominate the race. William Byron. Here's one that could potentially get up here and, and dominate early. So I think your choices are between Truex and uh, Byron, who's been in great form. He ran the truck race to get some more experience out there, did well there. Um, you know, the, the truck drives is completely different, but he, he wanted to do it to get a feel for a track. Uh, was leading, I believe, last race and almost won here. Uh, but I had somebody spun him out late, if I recall. So uh, third in practice here, 12th overall, um, you know, average running position, which isn't bad for tire wear track. Again, 18th finish, but he has led some laps here, only almost 3%, but he's in better form this year, and I think he's definitely one to consider. Ross Chassin, we got to talk about the fight. So if you didn't watch the end of the race last week, um, Noah Gregson decided that he wanted to take some vigilante justice, went and uh, confronted Chastain about his driving style, grabbed his fire suit, 
Justine clocked him, and then security got in the way, and um, you know Noah couldn't get a hit in. And if you saw Kyle Busch's press conference, it was perfect because he said NASCAR should adopt the hockey rules of fighting. So give them like thirty seconds. If they go to the ground, break it up. If one has like a clear advantage and is beating the tar out of another one, then stop it. But you know, or if they're starting to get gas, then step in. But just give them a couple seconds to settle it, and then he's like, "You think of how good it would be." TV ratings would go through the roof. So, uh, Chastain said he's worked everything out with Grayson. They went and raced some modified to put it behind them. They're Chevy drivers, and I don't know if that's team talk or if if it really is. But um, you know, he's he's just so aggressive here. Twenty first overall, a little bit better than average for tire wear tracks. So I just put, could he get out there and dominate this? Yes, but. I like Byron and Truex better, and I think that he's going to make a mistake that's going to be costly. Or it's a track where somebody could easily take him out. If he doesn't take himself out, getting that Darlington stripe, run too close against the wall. So I think I'll have high ownership, but GPP for me. Suarez, um, 31st in practice. Nothing really special here. GPP, I don't know if he's going to be able to remain in the top 10. Kyle Larson, I think, is going to be very, very popular also. Another one to consider as a, um early dominator, maybe a second-wave dominator. Uh, highest composite rating with tire wear tracks here. Uh, ninth overall finish here. It's led 20% of the laps, so definitely someone to keep an eye on. Practice was a little not great, but... I think, you know, if you look at his overall track history and his overall history on tire wear tracks and the fact that he did, you know, run the Xfinity race yesterday and, and did really well there and, uh, you know, was battling out with John Hunter and Nemechek and he got the best of it for the win. Uh, so definitely somebody to consider also. So I think you really want one of Larson, Byron, and Truex in your lineup to start. You're building, like, multiple, like, lineups if you're doing like maybe a three max or something then maybe do one with each one and then throw the rest of my prime plays in there and then fill in with the rest of the cash plays denny hamlin's where i'm going to start with the first prime play here again 23rd in practice not great but again practice is practice i know that the um toyotas have been a little bit slower recently but obviously trex found something for the pole here He's won four times at this racetrack. His average finish is better than anybody in the field. He's led 11% of the laps um, so that he's run. So I definitely like Danny Hamlin. I think he'll find his way up to the front and get out there and lead at some point. So he's my first prime play. Tyler Reddick, they did something... These cars had something majorly illegal with them because they usually, if they fail inspection twice, then they like start to throw out the car chief, but the crew chief got thrown out. So I'm sure he'll be, you know, this day and age of technology with texting and like, you know, he'll be probably talking to the people running the thing. I, I don't think they can completely ban them from communications or put them in like a solitary confinement or something. So they can't have any contact with the team. Um, you know, if teams can find ways to cheat with these cars, they can find a way for him to be involved with the race. But still not being there live to see things, I think it's kind of a disadvantage. Practice looked good. 11th overall finish. Uh, runs up against the wall there, which can be dangerous here at Darlington. He's got three top 10, so I think he's in play here, but a GPP for me. Uh, Brad Kazowski, you know, his, his form has been okay recently like he he was really progressing and now he's kind of plateaued uh 13th in practice 11th uh, you know average running position on these tire wear tracks in 18 races he's had half of them in the top 10 he leads laps here uh pretty low dnf free and um 12th uh, place average finish so i think he's in play in a gpp blaney i think he'll have a little bit higher ownership um but I just, these Fords just haven't looked great this year. They changed the noses in the off season. I think they're they're beginning to realize that that was a mistake with the aerodynamics and just um, how these cars drive. So it's something that they'll probably have to reevaluate in the off season again for the 2024 cars when they come out. Uh, so 12 races here, only one top 10. I think it'll have higher ownership than 
Um, he should, but I'm off him. GPP. Kyle Busch is always a GPP for me. Uh, you know, he could come out here. He's led the most laps of anybody at this race, but he's also has a 13% DNF rate. Uh, really good at tire wear tracks. So, um, you know, someone to definitely consider. Probably the first guy on my GPP lineup, but I can never play him in cash. Ty Gibbs continues to have decent form recently. So uh, I'll continue to to play him. I think he's starting to learn. Only one race here, 15th finish. Average on tire wear tracks. So um, I think if you if you, he's kind of priced in no reason to land at 7K here. If you're trying to get like two or three 10K guys in, you're not going to be able to get him in. But if you, you take one 10K guy and like a couple 9K guys, he fits in your lineup. Okay. So somebody consider Harrison Burton starting way too far forward. Um, spins out almost every single race, uh, you know, weekly. So. I just somebody that I can't play. I, I I barely see him back in the Xfinity series next year. Um, it's just not um, ready for the Cup series yet. Needs to maybe go do a John Hunter Nemer check, go back down and start with trucks and build his way back up. Um, and I can't believe they kicked Matt Bin Di Benedetto because Matt Di Benedetto was close to winning races, and Harrison Burton is nowhere even close to that. So now put a dollar bet on him for winning the race today because after I've like trashed him like that, he's probably gonna like luck box a win or something. No, don't no, not gonna happen. Uh Joey Logano, he's he's been struggling, I think, again with the Fords and the Penske cars haven't been as dominant this year. He's been, you know, better than average on um tire wear tracks. 13th place overall finish here. You know, he has had 10 top tens and 13 races. Uh 19th of practice. So, you know, I'd take a shot at him in a GPP. He wouldn't surprise me if he gets up there. I don't know if I'd consider him one that could potentially dominate the race. Uh, you know, he just really needs to get in that clean air. And I just don't see that happening with him. Christopher Bell is one that I can see getting up there and dominating almost in the Top 10 with um, composite. His practice speeds around, around where he qualified. I think he'll have high ownership. I think he's safe cash play here. And I think he's a nice um, 9K play pivot off of some of these 10K guys. So if people are trying to get three 10K guys, and then maybe you can get a decent like 7 or 8K guy as your last guy in with a value play instead of like trying to take two value plays. And that um, might be the difference in a winning lineup. Eric Almarola uh, and Austin Dillon. Almarola is very slow in practice. Um, okay, average for tire wear tracks. Average finish 17th. I, I just don't like him here. Another Ford. So uh, I'm out on him. GPP to fade for me. Austin Dillon, GPP, like 16th in practice. Not bad here. Five top tens. Hasn't led any laps. Finished every single race. Uh, which which is good. So um, and twelfth. So there's some upside there, but I think he's a GPP. And again, he might be like one of the plays to th last man in cash. I'm fine with that seven k. If you're like building with with the nine k guys instead of trimming all the ten k guys in. Michael McDowell, I like even better here in um, cash. You're seventh in practice, seventeenth overall. Uh, I know twenty six overall finish here, but he hasn't been in good cars for some of them two top tens i think if you could finish in the top 20 that's all you really need here at 6100 so definitely a nice value play to put into your cash lineup um, to try to make some of the guys in the top work kevin harvick will probably have some high ownership but look at the place differential he's at 30 races here average finish 12th led a bunch of laps second most on the board 18th uh, tire wear tracks very very good he used to dominate atlanta so um definitely somebody to keep in consideration for your lineups here but again he's kind of priced in no man's land but if you take him with the prime plays instead of trying to pay up for like um byron truex or larson then that's really going to balance your lineup and um help you get some better uh of your fifth and sixth drivers in your lineup versus um you know trying to take some of these lower guys Chase Elliott, prime play here, number one in practice, um, didn't um, qualify as well. 14 races here, five top tens, led some laps, 33% um, DNF rate, which is 
a little bit concerning that uh, one third of the races he's he's not finished, but I think he'll be fine here today. I think the legs healed. He's, he's doing better and he should get up there um, and, and maybe even lead some laps at, at some point in play, but just the place differential, you know, probably will have a top 10, if not a top five car. Uh, 9,600 is not a bad price when all these other guys are priced in a 10 K range in a Hendrix car. So um, really like him. Well, definitely in play. Justin Haley and Josh Berry, GPPs. Um, I know <clears throat> that um, someone that I really respect in, in a discord that I'm in was high on, on Josh Berry yesterday. And um, I, he was, he was, he was right. He did have a top um, 10, um, but just looking at his like tire wear tracks, um, 27th over and these are more like Xfinity numbers for him. Uh, just hasn't yesterday he did well um, but hasn't really performed great at Darlington that's kind of underwire is often plus his pricing there at 8k here he's still in GPP I mean he's in a Hendrix car 27th in in practice um, so everything points to him like being around the mid 20s for a finish at 8,000 I, I just I'd rather you know take like Ty Gibbs at 77 who's has seemed to have better form recently or save like a thousand dollars and take Austin Dillon but you know definitely in play here Gillian we like him when he starts in the 30s so he's starting too far forward so he's a fade Austin Sindrick I think will be a cash play and highly owned just being 5900 a Penske car it's just like he's has like the ultimate sophomore slump but didn't look bad in practice um, and is about average at tire wear tracks. So, and he did better here when he was in um, Xfinity. So like two races here, 17th. So and there's, that's still eight place differential points. If he hits his average and that's where his practice speed was too. So I think at 5,900, that's enough to get it done for you to be the fifth or sixth guy into your lineup. Ray Newman coming back in a Rick Ware car is a fade. I mean, he'll just make it impossible for many laps for some of these guys behind him to pass him. But I think if Noah Grayson gets up to him, then he'll he'll move him out of the way and um, say welcome back. So uh, to cup, but it's good to see Newman back. But I don't, don't expect much from him, so he's a fade for me. Uh, Chris Busher cash play here, even though he's a four and he struggled, he was loving the practice. Um, 18th overall finish and, you know, a little bit above average for tire wear tracks. So I think it, it's 7,600. He's somebody that you can put in your cash line, but he's probably priced in no man's land. I'd rather take the next guy, Eric Jones. Second in practice here, one last year. Uh, if you take out um, a couple, like the previous three races, let me see, for Eric Jones, he was like a top six car for like most of his races at this track. Um, so like he, he's got a really good history at, at Darlington and three wins. So definitely somebody, I know he was under the weather. So some people were kind of um, a little bit scared to potentially play him, but you know, that was, didn't know if he'd be able to practice or qualify, but he went out there and was number two in practice. Um, he's led laps here. So everything points in the right direction, like his qualifying his spot here. So I definitely think that he will um, do really good here at 7,100. I think you got to lock him in as, as a prime play. Grayson GPP, again, not too much experience here on the cup level. Um, these are more of his Xfinity numbers here, where he had an eighth overall finish, led laps, um, five top fives out of seven, and he finished every single race, which is, which is good. But 32nd in practice. Um, but if if Jones shares some of his magic with him as his teammate of like what's going on, um, and Grayson doesn't grade out too well for tire wear tracks either, so he's a GPP, but you know, keep him in your player pool. Almondinger and Briscoe, I think, are cash plays. You can down here. Their practice speeds, especially Almondinger, is much better than where they qualified. Nothing super special, but they're not 30 place cars. They should be able to get at least five, maybe 10 place differential points if everything breaks well. So um, consider them. 
Priest and Dylan GPPs, they're really low owned, um, but they're better than the bottom feeders below them a couple spots here. Nothing special, but if they could get into the top 25 at their price points, they're okay. I mean, Dylan's really struggled in the Spire car. Um, it's not the the Josefar one that was running his Finicity series with JR Motorsports. I know they have like probably a, they have like a, a Tekka alignment. I know Dylan ran the race yesterday and looked um better in that car that he was in, but that was like an actual like, decent car. This one isn't so a GPP, but um, some to consider. Corey LaJoy, I think, will be very popular just starting this far down. This is where we like to play Corey LaJoy. Uh, tenth in practice, average for tire wear tracks, uh, 27th overall. You know, so this is not a track where he's going to excel, but he should be able to get like maybe anywhere from eight to five, eight to 10 place differential points. And then I'm not interested in BJ McLeod or Brandon Poole in, in these cars starting back here. So that's what I got for you. And um, like I said, just, you know, I kind of didn't mention it, but look at these guys at the bottom, like Elliot and Gillian with the long run speed, but still a fade and, and Busher. Um, but most of the long run speed and tire fall off guys are up top there. So I think you want to start again with Truex, um, Byron, or Larson, put the prime plays in. If you want to uh, pivot off that, if you, you, know, you want to throw like Harvick in there as, as the fourth guy, and then that just gives you a completely different balance build, and that might work out for you too, especially if all these guys crash at the end like um, we've seen in the truck race and in the Infinity race and, um, you know, ruins your day. So hope everybody has a good weekend. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below uh, or hit me up at Megaro31 on Twitter. Um, if you want more information on FSI DFS, it's in the um, description of the video. And, you know, if these videos help you, as always, please like, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends. You've been doing a great job. We keep on growing in, um, in views and with um, uh, people subscribing. So really, really appreciate that. So have a good weekend. Again, please celebrate with your mothers, your wives, all the special women in your life today and um, enjoy the race. Good luck in your contest. I'll see you next time.